Well, hello there. This is week 11 time-lapse edition of the Deadly Redback Spider Hunger Games. Because it's a time-lapse edition, this evolves between week 10 to week 11. And maybe we'll have a little recap of what happened back in week 10. The treacherous and most deadly Daddy Longleg Spider, the most incredible spider in the world, was put in the spider tank and guess what? It sort of survived and it seemed to be getting around without the Redback Spiders wanting to know anything about it. So maybe this does enforce the thought that the Daddy Longleg Spider or Solo Spider is something that the Redback Spiders are going to respect. And maybe I could count on my fingers three things that the Deadly Redback Spider has had respect for. One of them is the Black House Spider. Another one is a spider which has been in the spider tank for a long time, the False Widow Spider. People identified those black spiders that look like Redbacks without the Redback as False Widow Spiders, and I think they're correct. Maybe we could add the most amazing critter as a fourth critter. Hey, let's add Gonzo, the amazing Gonzo who was so magical. And I better put a verbal warning into this video and that title so people aren't triggered when they see deadly spiders. Warning, this video contains graphic images of deadly spiders. And I'll tell you what, I really do miss Gonzo. It was back on week five uh, that featured the amazing Gonzo. The spider tank's a fairly complex place now. Not much greenery, as you can see. I'll put a red circle around the daddy long legs as it moves around a tank. It does move around a tank fairly freely and fast. Mind you, the time-lapse footage makes the movements accelerated even more. There's all sorts of spiders in there now. There's spiderlings, of course, from the redback spiders. Those false widow spiders, I hope I'm correct there. One problem I've got is that people will identify a spider in the comments, and I love you doing that, but often there's uh, clashes of identification. You know, I might get six different spider names for one spider that I ask, hey, what sort of spider is that? And the way you can tell the false widow spiders in there is they've got a very shiny black back to them, uh, whereas the red back spiders have got the red stripe, but it's a matte black. They look extremely similar to each other, uh, but the main difference is one's a very shiny back spider, the other one's a very matte black spider. And one very curious thing, I think it's very curious, is I have not seen one of the adult female redback spiders bind up in web, capture and suck to nothing, one of those shiny black false widow spiders. So that speaks volumes about the false widow spider, that is, if it is really a false widow spider. I'm going to keep the camera wide here for some time, hopefully got focus on where the daddy long leg spider is, and I'm keeping the camera wide so you can see just how dynamic this spider tank is. There's all sorts of things going on here. The redback spiders, I think they're mooching around so much because just prior to this video, I'm pretty sure I was cleaning the glass back on week 10, and what the spiders do is they have to reset their little network of webs. The other spiders in there which are always casting webs and trying to escape are those redback spiderlings. The orange things in there, if you're not sure, well, that's just pieces of carrot there. That's put in there to feed the crickets. The crickets are put in to feed the spiders. The Christmas beetles are just because it's that time of year. And I know the redback spiders love beetles because in the garden, when I was looking around, I often saw the redback spiders would be sucking a nice beetle. And don't discount those uh, spiderlings because they are wired to kill from day one. That's nature in play. And from what I can see, and maybe you can see this as well, is the beetles in there are often being attacked by the spiderlings. The spiderlings are very clever at getting onto critters where the redbacks would have trouble getting up nice and close. Because they're small, they can attach themselves to legs and do things that larger spiders can't do. And it does have me thinking that maybe the Daddy Longleg Spider's biggest weakness is for the fact it's got those very long spindly legs, which would be very open to attack from the redback spiderlings who can attach themselves to anything they want. So this is where the video starts to change gear. Something happens up the back there behind that yellow caterpillar truck. The Daddy Longlegs was up there and then it sort of slumped back down behind the truck. Of course, we can't see what's going on in there and then it reappears, and we have to look very, very carefully at the interaction between the Daddy Longlegs and the other spiders in the tank from this point on. And from what I can see, the sprightliness and freedom of the Daddy Longleg spider has been sapped. Something has happened to start to bring that magnificent spider down, and it does bring a tear to my eye. The spider tank, as I found out over the weeks, can have some mysteries. This is going to be one of those mysteries. I do not know what happened behind the Caterpillar truck, all I know is that the Daddy Longleg Spider has come out of there and not feeling like it was before it went in there. 
For all I know, it may have been the ghost of Gonzo that was hovering behind there that scared the Daddy Longlegs into the shock of death. And one curious thing that I notice happening is, uh, normally when spiders capture something or kill something, it becomes part of their feed. Now, there might be some optical illusions here. People might say, oh, but it looks like there are spiderlings or other spiders uh, going for the Daddy Longleg spider. I think all this is happening in between the camera and the spider and there's webs now being put around the spider tank. A very strange thing happened that the Daddy Longleg spider uh, was just left there. And this sort of starts to get into the realm of very secret spider stuff. Maybe there are people who study spiders and entomologists, you know, higher end people far higher than me, that possibly can enlighten us on what's going on here. I'm just hoping those people are watching these videos. But in reality, maybe there's fat chance those people are wasting their time on YouTube. So poor old Mrs. Daddy Longleg Spider is down and out for the count. Thomas the Tank is still smiling. As you can see, there is more and more redback spider web being put up in the tank. The spiderlings just never stop. Very dynamic little things. And the other spiders in there don't stop as well. What I've noticed with the spider tank, uh, because I captured it in time lapse, I can see great cycles of time, is there seems to be very busy periods of time where the spiders all seem to run around like crazy. And then there are other times when they are very dormant. Uh, I don't understand why this happens. And... Remember, this is a very unnatural environment because the redback spider is a nocturnal spider. It is very happy to be in total darkness. I've actually been very surprised that I've been able to capture what I can because they're under unnatural light. And from what I could see is these spiders don't like light. That's why you don't see them out during the day. But they certainly got used to the light in the spider tank and that didn't stop them from doing all the things that these spiders like to do. You know what that is? Breed. There's always been that saying, you know, breeding like rabbits. Well, I've got the saying, breeding like redback spiders, from just a couple of female redback spiders. So many baby spiderlings can be generated, it's not funny. And as we can see in the spider tank here, these spiders can adapt to new environments really easily. And that's why these spiders have been so successful when they escape Australia in setting up in other countries around the world. And even in environments which many people said would be too cold for these spiders. Hey, these girls can adapt to anywhere. These girls are taking over the planet. And here's a shot that's going to shock a lot of people. It's the Daddy Longleg spider in its death throes. It's a mystery to what's happened. And what's even more mysterious is I can't see any other little critters and other spiders coming along and feeding from this spider that's been mysteriously killed. I'm not sure what killed this. I can only assume it's a spider. Was the Daddy Longlegs purely a thrill kill? I don't think this spider actually killed anything in the spider tank. It pranced around as if it was only a spider tank, but sadly it has succumbed to a very mysterious death. Luckily for me, I've got a very inventive audience with lots of wisdom and humour, and maybe they're going to tell me what killed the Daddy Longlegs spider. And I'm sure that's going to set the comments area alight. It won't be from the trolls because they never look at this part of the video. I did a Google search about keeping these types of spiders as pets. A bit of an exotic, dangerous pet. Uh, the legality of it, who knows. I've had a few people say to me, watch out Leah, you can get into trouble keeping certain creatures in your home. Mind you, these things are all through the backyard. I found a fantastic website with some fantastic reads and pictures of redback spiders. Really interesting. I can't use the pictures or anything in my video because it belongs to someone else, but I'll put the link of this blog down in the info area of this video. Well worth the read. And there's one really good point here. There's, there's many good points, but this is one of the good ones. It says here, the modern day redback spider relies on humans. Yay, I know that for a fact. A quick glance at the distribution of the redback spider in Australia reveals it correlates well with populated areas. There's actually a map there and it just shows it's all around the capital cities. The spiders are most often found in or around human homes. Fantastic, eh? <laughs> I know that for a fact. We've got them everywhere. And it goes on to read with only a small proportion located outside urban areas. That's a very, very interesting point because last summer I went down a bush track away from the suburb and I thought I'll be smart and I'll go and find a redback spider out in the bush. You know what, I was down there at dusk, I had torches, I was going to all of the lurks and perks where I thought I would find one of these spiders. I didn't see any of their web. These, spi <laughs> these spiders are smart. It's too hard to live in the bush 
we're going to go and live up in people's backyards and around their homes because that's where the food is. And apart from these spiders being able to breed up massive numbers, you know what? These spiders aren't dumb. These spiders love to live in the lap of luxury.